This is so reminiscent of If My Heart Wings. I like it a lot though. So I'm guessing Sai goes to a different school than uh, Akito. Oh well. Morning. Big bags not allowed in school? It was sort of... I was sort of camping in the mountains. I greeted my teacher, headed through the school gates. Part my bike and went toward the buildings, but didn't head to my home room. Building 2, where the culture club rooms are located, were deserted and was still pretty early. Walked down the quiet hallway, stopped in front of a certain door. Astronomy Club. That's what was written on the side of the door. I took a key out of my pocket and opened the Astronomy Club room door. I could sleep through the first period. Truly feeling tired, tried the back that was weighing down on my shoulders, looked at the clock. I had 10 minutes until home room. Planned on mixing with a sports team to get on a post morning training shower, but there wasn't time. Guess I just washed my face and brushed my teeth and then head to class. Cut the towel and toothbrush from my desk and head out of the room. Totally normal morning. The beginning of another day, nothing special about it. Didn't think much about it, but I figured this was likely how my days would be. But on a day, after school, something would happen that would bring a little variety to my daily life. What was that? What? What is this? What happened? Must be the place. Private Institute, Mako Academy. It's an escalator, es escalator school, going from kindergarten all the way to college, located near the sea in the sprawling city of Hoshinonaka. He's been looking at it, you should. Uh, you could tell that it was a school from the kids or well to do families. Watching the kids go home, get the feeling that they were some somehow more refined. And while they lived in the same city as us, they were really in a different world. Gather Mars off, went against the flow of students going home, entering the school building. What's going on? Inside, the building seemed even more overworldly than the exterior did. What is this place? Is this actual school? It was in, I was in an airy corridor lined by glass walls. I felt like I was lost in some place in a faraway land. Even under normal circumstances, visiting another school was nerve-wracking. But this feeling of strangeness was something else. Of course, all the students I passed stared intently. I went down the hall, trying hard to avoid any eye contact. Guess this is it? I stopped in front of the door and looked at the sign mar uh, mar marking my destination. Astronomy Club. Wait, wait, he's in a different school this time, isn't he? What's going on? It was written right there in front of me. Gulping nervously, knocking the door. Hey, excuse me. To my surprise, the open door revealed only darkness. No one's here? At least, that's what I thought, until a tiny light popped into life in the middle of the room. What? A girl's face appeared in a faint light, nearly let out an involuntary yelp. In the light, flickering red like a candle, Young woman reached out of one of the cards laid on the table. It looked like tarot cards. She looked down at the cards and spoke. What's going on here? It was as if she was reading the future, like some kind of fortune teller. I answered. Um, yeah, I was told to come here at this time. Couldn't tell if she'd heard me or not. The beautiful yet creepy girl put the card back on the table. Let out a little laugh. <laughs> Akito Sorami of Maya. What's going on here? I'm a little bit creeped out. Yes, I am. Wait, hold on. What's Maya? Yeah, what? What? Oh. Huh. I thought it was a rather vague answer. I want to go home. What was with this totally creepy girl? Why was the room so dark? Wasn't this the astronomy club room? 
How's she doing? Why was she doing terror or whatever? Why? Who's my anyway? Looking at these buildings from the outside, I thought the people were here existed in another world by now. I felt a thousand times more out of place. I just stood there, not knowing how I should respond. Eventually, Mr. Beauti uh, Mrs. Beautiful, but totally creepy, broke the silence. <laughs> I like this, I like this a lot. What exactly was the standard response at a time like that? It's not really something they teach you in school. Trust my instincts and answered. Oh man, I think I left my stove on. <laughs> <laughs> the music is incredible! What the fuck? Oh. <laughs> Completely broke any tension. Oh man, I think I left my stove on. That caused a fire. To hurry back, later. <laughs> Who's that? Just before I could leave, the door behind me slammed shut, closing me in. Darkness grew deeper than before. Sweat started to run down my forehead. I suddenly felt like I was about to become part of some ridiculous crime scene. I had really been looking forward to going home and having Sias Odin. To enjoy that flavorful, tender, stewed radish. That fish cake. So juicy and soft. And though they may call me a heretic, the escape <laughs> his capability captivating cabbage roll. His capability uh, captivating, whatever. Uh, I don't have the kind of training necessary to stay calm in a situation like this. I don't think you're going to get any point across this way. Uh, could you at least open the curtains? If not, I'm going to home even if I have to force my way out. What the hell? <laughs> Okay. Um, I think that was a pretty heavy Chinibi accomplice to something. But the heavy curtain opened. The windows allowed... Excuse me, sorry. The windows allowed uh, soft sunlight to fill the room. What had up to now been a creepy chamber it was revealed to be a standard astronomy club room. It was a perfectly normal room all along. <laughs> These two are pretty great, not gonna lie. This is turning into a chore. But at the same time, when she was stumbling around in shock like that, I only made her more beautiful. So, you are... Heard about those two from our president. Or rather, our former president. Orihime was a third year, and Hanukkah was a first year, like me. As a third year, Orihime should normally have been retired from the club life, but maybe at a school like Meiko, third years are less worried about tests. So it's nice to meet you both. I'm Akito Sorimi. I'm a first year in the astronomy club at Hoshino Daichi. Thanks. When I sit down, Brought me an elegantly decorated cup of tea and a wild strawberry tart. That was a proper reception? That that the whole thing with tarot cards and creepy lights? No. I didn't really think that was a proper way to meet someone for the first time myself. I'd been sigh and I'd be crying. Anyway, what do you want to talk about? I like she had said something about it before. But I have been so wrapped up in fancy language I hadn't gotten it. No, not really. A look of shock covered Orihime's face. Our president didn't tell me anything at all. The only reason I came was because the president had asked me. It's complicated, but by president I actually mean former president. Since he's a 30 year, he had to retire from the astronomy club last summer. Since I was the only member of our astronomy club, I also became the president, despite being a first year. 
but as there weren't any other members, there wasn't anyone to call me Mr. President. And although I should have been aware of my own position, I'd always called the former president, President, and for me, he was still the president. It was a little complicated. President told me, I want you to go and hear what Orihime and Meiko Academy has to say, but nothing else other than that. Onika was whispering into Orihime's ear. Two of them started, stared at me curiously. What was that look for? Those two were, in, those were the weird ones. I would just hear out of respect for our president. The Six Stars Club? Not really, no. I'd never heard of it. It kind of sounded like the name of a kid's playgroup. My bad, I'm still getting the timing for the voice for the voices uh, voice lines and stuff, so I apologize. Can we even scroll up? Can we repeat them? Oh, we can see and jump! Oh, fantastic! I'm glad we have that. Fantastic. Association from six schools around... Oh, that's still, that's still horror line, I can't mind. Sounds like the way most rock bands break up. But anyway, I had no idea there was even such a group. What a romantic story. Okay, so what about this group? Huh? Monica came up close to me. If I continue on this path, we're doomed. You must awaken from your ageless slumber, Maya, eldest of the seven sisters, to deny our fate. I think that's what she said. I think that's what was she said to me, but I still didn't get it. It's just me. Or even had a smug look on her face. Cubs of Storm for members everywhere. Okay, so what is with this Maya stuff already? But you heard Hanukkah's words. Rihimi aside and looked miserable. Marude, Hitono Itonamiga Umidasta Machino Akariga, Yosora no Hoshio, Hitots, Mata Hitots to Kakikiste Shimaoni. So Kuni Taisho Surichio Garuba, Hoshino Nakara, Temono Tomoshibi or Kesana Itaminimo, Katsten Ogon Jida, your Torimodos Hitio Garuno. She definitely had more lines than, than I thought she was. Can I have? From the guiding light of astronomy from dying throughout the Hoshinozaka city was bring back the golden age. Sorega. Rebuild the Six Stars Club. Orihime nodded her face. Uh, her face. She nodded her face, yeah. What the hell is wrong with me? Orihime nodded her head with a very serious look on her face. It was unusual for astronomy clubs from different schools to work together, have observation meetups. It's like when sports clubs have scrimmages with teams from other schools. This Six Stars Club started out as just an observation meetup. It's later morphed to a more permanent arrangement with activities outside of the respective schools. After the fall of Six Stars Club, each school club lost a lot of members. So in order to revive the Six Star Club as a whole, each individual club would need to be revitalized as well. But the Six Stars Club was shut down by alumni, wasn't it? What exactly happened in that disagreement over its direction, I wonder? If you just go out and try to rebuild it, wouldn't they get mad? Some schools, former members of the sports club sections, held a lot of clout over them. 
although astronomy fell under the culture club rules. Were they allowed or not, if we tried to arrive the Six Stars Club, they wouldn't hesitate to butt in. <laughs> With a supremely confident smile, Orihime walked to the middle of the room, stood in front of the spherical astrolabe, astrolabe? Astrolab? set uh, conspicuously on a table. It was quite old looking, judging from this centered placement of the Earth and the surrounding celestial bodies. It appeared to be the decoration modeled on something from a Ptolemaic Ptolemaic area? Jesus. You know what I mean. Orihime placed her hand on it. <laughs> Saying this, she slowly spun the astrolabe. Planets orbit, the planets orbit around me, is what she seems to be saying. With these hands, I can alter the course of the planets themselves. I have to admit, it wasn't exactly sure what she was going for. Did I actually practice for this? From the time being, for the time being, I pretend not to notice Orihime's dedication to the performance and said, I see what you're saying, and I understand your motivation. But I don't think I can help you. Oh, uh, don't even do stargazing anymore. I'm still a member of the Astronomy Club, but it just sort of worked out that way. I've already decided not to look at the sky anymore. I try to sound apologetic, but Orihime just st stared at me with a confused look on her face. What exactly happened? Which was expected. If someone in the Astronomy Club told me they didn't look at the stars, I'd do the same. <laughs> Well, if you already know, there's no need to explain it again. I guess if that's all, I better get going. And with that, I stood up and started to leave. Rahimi suddenly grabbed my hand. It was softer than I could have imagined, in a frozen place. Rahimi stared in my, into my eyes. She stared unmovingly into my eyes, as if she was reaching into my deepest memories. I'm sorry, really, but I can't. Rahimi wilted, her disappointment visible. It was like seeing Kotaro get sad when Saya wouldn't play with him. And I couldn't help but feel guilty. Well, I have to get to work. Able to bear it any longer, I stood to go, but this time it was Honoka who stopped me. Fine. When I said that, Rahimi seemed to cheer up a bit. She even smiled a little. That smile was more persuasive than any ridiculous argument, and I found myself nodding subconsciously. Well... I guess the mysterious, creepy beauty of another academy uh, was able to convince him to uh, get to the next minute just like that, huh? Oh, The girl on the way home from Hoshinodachi waved, so I gave a little wave back. I had no idea. Oh, that's what the Goku Muto wife. Okay. Come by so many times that I guess they remember me now. Oh, we come, we're taking our perspective from Saya. Oh, okay. That's what they seem to be calling me. My face felt hot. I was saying something about a boyfriend, too. I did worry a little. Just like the ones before, 
All students on the way home looked my way. Guess it was all natural, since it was so rare for a girl wearing another school uniform to be here. But I got so embarrassed that I couldn't stand anymore. Feeling helpless, I looked down at the package in my hands. Wait, who is the president? She's been smiling like that from the start. Never could have refused. I muttered, thinking back at Orihime's grinning face. First impression was so creepy, but I guess I was lucky I couldn't. <laughs> I was lucky I couldn't really pay attention to the rest of her. Rest of her. She was a little older. She got a lot different. Um, she got a different kind of beauty compared to Saya. Boobs are bigger too. <laughs> my God. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to verbalize it, <laughs> just know it. Saya wouldn't be very happy if she knew I was using her as a base of comparison. Thought of myself as I pedaled my bike back to school gate. Whenever I thought of Saya, I thought of Odin. Oh, Saya's Odin. I sigh like a lovesick child. We're just about the time for work. My trip to Mako Academy took longer than planned, so I didn't have time to go by to Saya's house to pick up the Odin. I've only been looking forward to tonight's banquet. Just thinking about that old and she makes she is making me hungry. Maybe should have maybe should have a snack before I headed out. Uh, and she's here. Oh. Saya, what are you doing here? I mean, hi. She must have meant for the former president. So I had met him before. He came away just for me. I told her beforehand that I had a sudden errand to run. Oh, you don't mean... A little angelic smile, so I picked up a package from a desk. <laughs> Ta-da! You brought it in the pot? You really are something. Must have been so heavy. Still waiting in front of the school carrying this? You rode the bus with this on your lap? <laughs> My mind's eye. Such a surreal sight. It seemed like she'd lost a dare or something. Thank you so much, Saya. <laughs> she really sweet. She is a really sweet girl. I like her a lot. The impulse to hug her and gratitude was so strong, I had to struggle to keep it under control. After all that work, I would have been <laughs> it would have been tragic to spill it uh, spill the Odin. Still you can still give her a hug anyway. <laughs> uh, speaking of, what the heck are you doing here? Oh. Yo, okay. Oh, what the heck are you doing here? I I was wondering who was you referring to. Because I don't think you'll be talking to Saya. That's Taki Takiichi. Oh, what's up, me, you moron? What are you doing slipping in here to eat your noodles? Wood snacking bandit just stood there, po uh, poking at his phone, slurping up his ill ill gotten curry noodles. Been trying my best to ignore him. But the spicy aroma of this noodles ignited my appetite. Is the Odin okay? I was actually fearful as I said that. Sai gave me a thumbs up. Nodded to each other like war buddies who had survived hell together. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Seeing that, Takichi slurped his curry noodles in protest. Synergy of sound and smell triggered my stomach like Pavlov's bell. And by the way, those purloined noodles had been my emergency rations. Also, the jerk wasn't even an astronomy club, just a mere basketball club member. Oh, nowhere special. Brushed him off and started change out of my uniform to get ready for work. Sai so turned it back while I changed. Sai so said, still looking the other way. How did she know that? Yeah, pretty much. Made some vague agreement, trying to misdirect. Didn't want to get into it. And this concerns you how? Sai's ears turned beat red, and she shook her head back and forth. 
Couldn't see her face, but it's pretty clear she wanted to know who I met. It was no big deal. Have you ever heard of the Six Star Club? <laughs> Saying it over and over, Sai turned around with a thoughtful look on her face, just so I was taking off my pants. My pants? Yeah, there we go. Almost read his pants, I was like, what the hell? <laughs> she turned bright red again, and went back around. <laughs> Finished changing my pants and hung up my uniform. It was a gathering of all the astronomy clubs in the city, apparently. They asked me to join in. I gave Sai a rundown of what Orihime and Honoka told me. It was really it really wasn't something I want to talk about, but with a pot full of Odin right in front of me, couldn't refuse Sai anything. Me neither. Well I did break up six years ago. After she heard my story, Sai opened her blue and orange eyes wide and stared at me. No way. Never looking up again. I put my answer on hold, but at the next meeting, I plan to refuse outright. I do wonder what happened, because they, they were pretty adamant. What is, the, what is the other girl as well? Oh god, I hope nothing bad happened. Topic ended on an unpleasant note. Sai's shoulders slumped a little in disappointment. That's why I didn't want to talk about it, I thought to myself. Don't make this situation awkward, though. Slurping up Takechi's curry noodles echoed in silence. Silently reached out to take the cup from Takechi's hand. He wouldn't let it go, though. Just give me a little. <laughs> wow. Gross. Takechi picked up some noodles with his chopsticks and reached toward me. You. Delectable spicy scent wafted toward my nose. Uh <laughs> and she is watching the whole thing from 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 afar. As if rub the cup of chopsticks from Takeji's hand. <laughs> it just went to town with him. <laughs> Scarfed down nearly all the noodles before Takeji could snap snatch them back. I smiled, feeling victorious, while chomping my mouthful of noodles. That's what you get for being creepy. <laughs> the kid picked up the leftover noodles and, bit off, and bits of cho uh, chopped meat stuck to, uh, stuck to the cup. I actually looked kind of sad. <sighs> Kitchi drank the last of the sauce and smacked his lips. He threw the cup and chopsticks away. <sighs> The kid just stood up and stretched. Just when I thought he was leaving, he stopped. Hmm? What? What's she got to do with anything? Why'd you go bring her up now? Oh, so she disappeared somewhere. もう4年も前だぞ。どっか行っちまったやつのことより今の自分とか身近にいる誰かのこと考えてやってもいいんじゃねえか。Come here a minute. どこ行くんだよ? This is more bathroom break. Pulled him out of the hallway, let go of his arm. What's the matter with you? Bringing up crap like that out of nowhere. いきなりでもないだろう。天文部の話題の続きじゃねえか。we're going to have a falling out at this rate. Just forget it, it's my problem. It's not like he was the one they were talking about. When he saw how upset I was, he gave a little sigh. I That's fine. Could see why I bothered him. I knew he was just trying to help. I had a lot of friends who tried to help me. Should be grateful. I said it's fine. I don't remember you owe me anything. As far as I'm concerned, it's the only way it's the other way around. The only reason I'm able to do anything is you. If we started counting up who was who, it'd surely come up even. We're grinning at each other and bump fists. For an unseen, we had to die from embarrassment. 
I'm gonna hit the toilet. Sai's probably getting worried, so we should go back for a minute. She probably thought we were beating each other, silly or something. She's such a warrior word. Oh. I left Takeichi behind. Takeichi? Takeichi behind. Head off for the toilet. So something happened to the other girl, and she disappeared, huh? Hmm. 